Okay, hello everyone. Right, so we're going to do a lesson taster. Uh, let's call it a bit of a warm up uh, for tomorrow's self defense class. Now, we post uh, these tasters and uh, warm up sessions, prep sessions on our Facebook page, which is a public page. But the full lesson uh, that this will then roll into and I'll get you ready for will be on our private members group. Okay, so uh, make sure that you are. Uh, requesting or already a member uh, of that and if you're completely new to the club interested in learning some martial arts following our self-defense lessons fitness and everything else that we're doing uh, then drop us a message uh, it'd be lovely to welcome on board uh, new members especially at these uh, challenging uh, times of self uh, isolation uh, and everything else now uh, this week with uh, classes we've been working on focus pads we've been working some uh, fundamental uh, techniques and deliberate practice which is quite easily practiced on your own uh, even better if you've got someone that can hold pads bags and uh, even pillows we've been using and things like that and last week self-defense we were doing the striking uh, with partners so self-defense is very much a, a group exercise so family everyone can get involved when we're starting to get into what we're going to do this week which is locks and holds it actually gets a lot harder to do uh, on your own, okay? Because uh, it's difficult to put yourself into an armbar, uh, for instance, or even to throw yourself and uh, things like that. So I know a lot of the uh, martial arts schools out there that teach uh, purely jiu-jitsu, uh, Aikido, some of the uh, grappling martial arts are gonna have real difficulty uh, when uh, teaching the stuff online for someone that has to work uh, on their own. If you've got a teddy or something like that you can use, uh, that, that can potentially uh, help also. Uh, but we're going to have to think of inventive ways uh, to start learning. So what I'll do is I'm going to take you through a pretty straightforward warm-up uh, that we can do uh, for this self-defense lesson. And then just a little bit of an explanation and understanding of where we come to uh, with self-defense. And then the knowledge uh, can expand more. Obviously you can go online, plenty of stuff out there on YouTube, uh, books, uh, there's plenty of books out there. Maybe next week if I get an opportunity I'll bring some books down that I could suggest uh, where and uh, who to research up on. So your self-defense practice can be done in a different way when you don't have a partner. But let's get you warmed up to start. So let's all bow in. Okay, right, just jog it on the spot. We'll just do, we'll go with the old jumping jack warm up. So let's go for a, a minute of star jumps. I think next week we're going to do the warm up uh, a little bit different. We could possibly do a bit of break forwards or, or something like that as a warm up. If not next week, uh, definitely do it uh, the week after. Okay, but let's just raise our, our heart rate now. I've, uh, I've practiced uh, a lot of martial arts for a lot of years now. Okay, at our dojo we predominantly practice kickboxing and karate. Uh, they are our martial arts studies, which everyone works towards their grades and their belts in. Okay, just over heart rate, a little bit faster on this. So that are our martial art discipline lessons, shall we say. Uh, then we, so kickboxing and karate is base styles there. Then we have fight club or champion development lessons, and that's purely for the sports side. Now, when it comes to sport, there's a different uh, methodology to what we do because it's a competitive game and you've got to work with uh, the, the rules, the changes of rules, and uh, the way the sport, the game is played as well. So that, that in itself is a whole, whole different uh, spectrum to the martial arts. Hand pause there, that was a minute. So whatever we're doing, whether it's fitness, kickboxing, karate, Fight Club, we always need to go through some kind of warm up. Uh, what we're going to do today, or on the full lesson uh, tomorrow, is uh, explore locks and holds in self defense. So, we have a specific uh, self defense and uh, class uh, at our dojo every week. And even the games that we play at times have an element of self defense in a sense that you're learning how to judge something and everything else. So, in our martial arts study of karate and kickboxing, we're learning either the sport or the traditional art. But we're also learning self-defense as an aspect that you're grading on self-defense. And in those lessons, what we're going to do right now, think first and foremost as it is a martial arts study. So if we start talking about locks, if ever with this we got into a lesson where we were dealing with knives and things like that, think of it first and foremost.
almost as a martial arts study, okay? Uh, something that you can expand your knowledge on, learn, uh, that has been taught many times to many people all over the world for uh, many years. Uh, look at it from that point of view. What we're teaching you is self-defense, but as far as self-defense goes, there, there is no do this and you'll be safe, do that and you're safe. Like, there's uh, the best move of all, of any move that I can teach you. So, concentrate on this. If there's one thing I can teach you, uh, which is the best move in self-defense, and that is, you can explain it different ways, is just not to get involved in the first place. The move you don't have to use is the best self-defense move uh, that, that you can do. Okay, so if we're talking straight up, defending yourself, self-defense, then the best move is just don't get involved in it. Run away, okay? Get something, throw it home, get away, okay? That is the best move that you can do. When we start talking about more of the martial arts study, and we're working with locks, or last week with the striking, it is very, very effective, okay? If you elbow someone in the face, if our five-year-old daughter kicked me in the nuts, it's very effective. You will defend yourself uh, well uh, by doing those kinds. You don't want to have to. However, you may be in a profession, uh, you may be in the military or something like that, where it's called upon, and it might be called upon more often uh, than not, and you have to use skills like this. So there is a place for this, but what I'm saying is, think of taking this as a martial arts study. Do not think that you're all really big balls and walking down the street, you can take on anyone, or well, you should be outside walking down the street at the moment anyway, uh, but taking on anyone. And that, that's not where we're going with this as well. So, we've got that done. And kids, uh, don't do this on brothers and sisters at home when you go back to school and that. Do it at home, but come here, okay? Unless you're defending yourself. But here, I'll move on from that. I just wanted to try and get that kind of message across so people understood it. Okay, we've raised our heart rate. We've probably cooled down a little bit weighty now. We won't worry about any activation of press up, sit ups in this session because it's self defense. And we do have some uh, older uh, students that join us, more mature students that join us. Uh, for the self-defense and uh, we did a, a different kind of fitness for them this week actually uh, so uh, we're you know we're, we're covering, covering all the family generation way of training so we won't go for press ups and everything like that striking so last week a bit of strategy to what we're doing with our, our self defense here striking is very effective you would strike someone to make distance to get away okay so if someone was attacking you trying to harm you steal from you take from you and you yourself, striking a punch or a kick isn't pleasant to do on someone, but if you strike them, uh, knee them, elbowed, it should make space from you and them so then you can get away, okay? Uh, that, that's what the striking strategy is about. Uh, knocking can do the same in a way you could throw someone uh, and then make space and get away, but think of the strategy of locking as to take space away from them. If anyone uh, is uh, into MMA, uh, you know, the sports side of things like that, strikers will want to move around and keep distance from the person. They want to keep you at a range, at a distance. Uh, with uh, grapplers, they want to close that gra uh, range down. They want to get inside and, uh, and stop you from getting away. That's where the ammos come from. So we're not going to do grappling as such, we're just going to do more of a, a traditional, it ties in with our karate, a bit of a tradition with the jiu-jitsu, uh, locks and holds, and we're going to do all those just to stand up uh, this particular week. So uh, let, let's go through the warm up for this, so just forward wrist extensions, and then tomorrow when we're doing these techniques it's going to make a little bit more sense or in the, in the follow up lesson to this, so push your thumb, pull your fingers round, push your thumb, pull your fingers round, I hope you can see well enough on that distance after what's just about. Give some feedback. If you can't see it, you need to be standing a bit closer, uh, then give some feedback on this. Okay? So that's forward wrist extensions. Now, inward twists, this way. So I'm curling my fingers around and pushing with my thumb that way. So that's inward twist rotation. Outward, so exactly the same thing. Turn it outward, turn it outward. Like so. Wrist extensions. Heavy palms, lifting up, pushing down. Lifting up, pushing down. So this is good mobility, good uh, activation for what we're going to do, excuse me, the next week uh, for, for the self-defense this week. 
playing thumb wrist and three. So arm is like this. I'm going to take the thumb. I'm going to roll it round here and back. Thumb roll round, round and round and round and good. Other side. Thumb wrist and three. Good play. Thumb in. into lots and holes, opening and closing the fingers. Let's just put a little bit of a, because you can kind of be thrown around a little bit. Or at least not offend the hips. We used to, uh, my father and I, we used to uh, train a lot in uh, jiu-jitsu on a regular, well I say a lot, on a regular basis uh, with Leon J in uh, small circle uh, jiu-jitsu. Uh, shout out to uh, Leon uh, if uh, somehow uh, this cross pass with him, and uh, quite often Leon uh, used to ask us to do the warm up because uh, you know fitness does come in uh, to the grappling side of the arts and everything else. And uh, quite often those that train in that in a real traditional sense don't uh, do much uh, cross training anything. The MMA world has changed that slightly now, uh, but we would uh, need the warm up to get everyone you know, a bit fitter and everything. Quite. I'm going to come over a little bit closer and watch this back and see. Uh, if this has worked, okay, you might have lost my head. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna have a look back in a moment. So let's go for a basic wrist lock. Let's work this on ourselves to start with, okay? So pretend this is someone else's hand and you're gonna put them into a wrist lock. I'm gonna do it to myself now. So I'm gonna put my thumb at the back of the hand, ideally between these two knuckles, not on the hand, uh, not between them exactly here, just down the hand where the, the joints come down. This finger then is gonna come round and grip inside the thumb here. You know that rotation we did as a warm up? You push, and that's what I'm doing with this hand. Obviously, I'm gonna only stop there, otherwise I'll be turning myself kind of all the way around. So I put myself into a wrist lock, like so. So if I did it on the other hand, okay, put the thumb here, I bring the fingers around here, this way, and then I put myself into a wrist lock. So do it again off the other side. So we can actually use this as a warm up, uh, okay? If you're gonna do uh, some lots and holds with your, your family, with a partner right now, then you can do it. Make sure you're all on the same page when you're doing this, as in when I say with your partner, your partner can't be like cooking dinner or just watching telly and you go, put them in a lock, okay? You've got to, you know, all right, we're training now, and then put them in a lock. Uh, a goose neck, so take, again, this finger and thumb, and then wrap it around the neck of the wrist, I suppose. And then it's this one. Remember those heavy palms? It's this one here. Okay, so I'm pulling and I'm pushing with the head of the hand there. Goose neck. And you just hold that stretch, work that stretch a little bit in the other side. Don't really want to stretch joints as such, uh, but getting a bit of mobility in them is a good thing. Uh, and uh, it can help. Uh, prevent strains and things, especially if you know in an accident you fell over or, or such like. And it just prepares us for what we're going to do again tomorrow. Let's stretch them back the other way so we counter that stretch. A nice forearm stretch going. And then the other side, a forearm stretch here. Okay, bent elbow wrist lock. So, how you apply this one? Arm out straight in front. <clears throat> Thumb upside down, facing the floor. Now bring the arm back towards yourself or towards uh, your partner, okay? So the finger's facing this way. Everyone, even if you're with a family member or a partner at home, uh, still practice this on your own right now because it's part of the warm up. So we've got a right angle here, we've got a right angle there, 90, 90, and a right angle here, okay? If you had the arm out slightly, here, so if you were working on me, my arm was out or my body was twisted out like so. It still works, but it's not as effective. What we're aiming for is this. Keep this knuckle and that knuckle above each other. Don't let the hand do that. So twist the hand this way. Take hold and then rotate the hand, throttle the hand this way like so. So you're basically uh, pinching the wrist in there. Okay, how you get out of this is spin out. But we're not, we're 
not going to get into that or be like, I'm going to get this or anything like that. We're just going to, we're going to just study some martial arts. Yes, I know. Okay. So how we get into it on the other side, upside down, thumb down, pull it in. Hand here, keep that right angle. So I'm pressured that way as well as that way at the same time. We usually do tap when it hurts. I stretch out for the wrist. And shake it out. Right, so I gave you a couple of locks. What we're going to do is explore those with partners tomorrow. Uh, if you're without a partner, then watch the video and uh, wait until we get an opportunity to come down or, you know, explore uh, the, the knowledge that is out there for everyone. So we'll bow out there with the warm up. Okay, and then switch over to the full video, which will be posted tomorrow, but you might be watching this at another time, so you can just find it, or message us, or let us know, and we'll catch up soon. Peace out.